Hello, my name is Jim Bradley. I'm a lecturer in Construction Management and Engineering at the University of Limerick in Ireland, and I'm here to present our project on the optimization of the process for generation, delivery and impact assessment of toolbox talks on a construction site with multiple cultures. The researchers were Myra Feely, John Spallan and myself, all from the University of Limerick in Ireland. What we're going to look at will be we're going to talk about toolbox talks and adult learning to put the whole project into context. We're going to present the rationale behind the study, why we went with it, and the research methodology we have followed. The findings will be discussed and also we will put forward a set of recommendations as to how we can improve toolbox talks. Toolbox talks are a vehicle used at construction sites to deliver essential messages. Typically, we might have a change in process or procedure. Uh, there will be a toolbox talk around that, but primarily they're used in the realm of health and safety. And this can be a, a bit of a, a double edged sword in that sometimes toolbox talks can be relegated to tick, bo tick box exercises that are done purely for compliance without any real focus in terms of how to make them efficient and effective. And because of this, design and delivery isn't always done by personnel with appropriate training. And again, this leads to a, a negative impact with regard to the stickiness of the learning and also how people perceive the whole process. There's also the fact that if it's not appropriately resourced and planned, then a lack of consistency creeps in even on the same sites. And this too can have a negative effect in terms of how people see uh, toolbox talks with regard to their importance and also the uh, need to follow what has been said in the toolbox talks. Adults on site learn in different ways. Um, you know, you can have people who learn through their eyes. They, they read, they watch videos, they doodle, they, they draw diagrams. These are the visual type learners. Other people learn through their ears, they learn through discussion, being involved in uh, having a, a chat with somebody about an issue. They learn through what's called the auditory channel. And then finally, you have people whose preference is to learn by doing. Okay, So they like to roll up their sleeves and get stuck in and be involved in the, the, the teaching process or the learning process. Because of these three um, modes, People tend to have a primary mode and a, a secondary mode, okay? And because of this, we need to make sure that our training in regard to toolbox talks del delivery is blended so that we're hitting all three of these major modes, okay? And we know from uh, andragogy that adults do tend to learn best when they're involved. They don't like training being done to them. They like training to be done with them. Okay, so when we look at it from the point of view of the rationale behind this project, it was the experience of one researchers on site that toolbox talks weren't being effective because of the way they were designed and delivered. There was also the fact it was a London construction site, so the multicultural aspect brought on the, the problem with regard to language barriers. And because it was a very, very fast paced project, there was a continuous stream of information coming at the operators who were struggling to see a consistent message in an accessible format that they could then go off and implement. So we've, we thought that by looking at uh, th this particular um, issue, we might be able to make slight adjustments in the, the toolbox talks uh, process that would lead to significant improvement with regard to how health and safety was seen. From our uh, initial discussions, we set out four themes, how the projects are delivered, how the, the toolbox talks are actually impacted by learning type and language barriers, how people saw them and participated, and the duration and frequency. So we designed a questionnaire around these four elements. We delivered it uh, in a semi-structured format to 40 participants, project managers, site managers, foremen, safety officers, and general operators. And we also included detailed information on learning types so people could understand 
which learning type they sat with. The second part of the research methodology was we took a group of 20 participants, again spread across different roles within the site, and to them we delivered this uh, by the same trainer, training on the same topic in the same venue. Okay, Toolbox Talk A was delivered in a lecture format. It was all text, there was no discussion, and there was no involvement. So this training, Toolbox Talk A, was drawn, done at the people. Um, in contrast, Toolbox Talk B was demonstration and discussion based. Involvement was expected and encouraged, and people were asked to bring in their own anecdotes and their own experience with regard to the topic that was being discussed. Once Toolbox Talk A and Toolbox Talk B had been delivered, then there was a post-training interview to find out what's your preference, why do you like it, um, what's the benefit, and how do you how do you think we could actually implement uh, better training on site for you. So the findings came across the same four themes. With regard to delivery methods, there was a huge preference for demos and discussion. This involved an interactive and participative training seemed to really grab them, whereas the lecture format was found to be the least engaging. Interestingly enough, trust was seen as important that they liked the training to be delivered by an experienced trainer who knows the specific site and who they can trust with regard to, I suppose, asking questions and who they can trust to give them the right information for their specific site. In terms of how they saw Toolbox Talks, 87.5% of respondents said they thought they were important. Okay, 80% of respondents said they were more than willing to engage, provided that the training was delivered in a way that they could engage with it. Okay, and in contrast to that, up to 25% of them said that current training meant that they couldn't even remember what their last toolbox talk was about, which is a fairly uh, damning report with regard to uh, a toolbox talk on a health and safety uh, issue if 25% of the people can't remember it. Um, some of the, uh, I suppose, problems arranged because 60% of the participants identified as kinesthetic learners and the typical toolbox talk was delivered in lecture format. So from the, the learning types, we found that their preference was for discussion, experiences and problem solving to give the best results. Um, and to get over the language barrier, the use of assistive technology such as Google Translate, which everybody has on their smartphone, means that these people can be engaged if English is not their first language, they can be fully engaged in the training, in like real time, through their mobile phones. They can see what's being said, they can understand. And this means that the stickiness of the material is significantly enhanced for these people who don't have English as their first language. With regard to dur duration and frequency, 40% of them said daily TVTs are, are what they prefer to do. Okay, but there had to be a consistency in terms of duration and frequency. Okay, they, they didn't like, uh, I suppose, a, a, an unplanned sequence of TBTs. They liked it to be planned, they liked it to have be, I suppose, meet their expectations with regard to how often they're going to be delivered and how long they're going to be. And again, from this, uh, 10 to 15 minutes was seen as an ideal. Um, the duration for most of the uh, the people who were participating. From this we have a set of recommendations. The first one is we have to approach training from an andragogy approach, in other words we're teaching adults. We have to build in suitability for kinesthetics. They don't like to be talked at, they have to be involved. They also, the operators, or sorry, operators said they like to have opportunities for giving feedback. And maybe a reward system to encourage participation would, would help as well. But definitely the use of discussion, demonstration and anecdotes will seem to be a, a very positive uh, approach, especially if delivered by a trusted and knowledgeable trainer. To build on that, if we had a consistent approach in terms of format, frequency, duration, place and trainer again, you're getting this comfort zone being built up 
and people then begin to, I suppose, relax in the train and pay more attention and understand what's coming at them in a better way. The third thing then we found was the use of these assistive technologies using Google Translate to overcome language barriers so people could translate in real time and be able to understand what's coming at them. So the outcomes. If we adopted these three recommendations, we would see increased participation. Learning becomes sticky, so they go out with knowledge and they can remember what's being told. The learning objectives are met, so that health and safety improves, the issues are dealt with. And hopefully what you're seeing then is attitudinal and behavioural changes being achieved through the toolbox talks. And this is what we're trying to, to get to, where people behave in a way so that health and safety issues do not lead on to accidents or near misses. So thanks very much for listening. My own contact details by email would be jim.bradley at ul.ie. Thank you.